This poem is called Durango. It starts like this. Grandmother, great-grandmother, I see your old trunk, the one you brought from Mexico in 1913. Wood, painted flowers, cracked leather straps, the tarot cards wrapped in black velvet. Whose fortune did you tell? Yours? Mexico's? Grandmother, great-grandmother, you read Don Quixote. I touched your book. I read the passages marked by your hand in thick India ink. I remember being told you liked movies. They said you loved The Hunchback of Notre Dame. That reminded me of Charles Lawton, who reminded me of Anthony Quinn and Sophia Loren. That took me back to a 40s film with Gary Cooper and Barbara Stanwyck, where Anthony Quinn played her husband, Paco. Stanwyck killed him one night, pushed him under the pumping arm of the oil well. Then I thought of Marlon Brando, Viva Zapata, and Anthony Quinn again. I'll always remember Brando's death scene in Mutiny on the Bounty, a dying Fletcher Christian at sunset on a lost island in the South Pacific. Sometimes I think Brando really died. I remember the scene from Last Tango when he is talking to the corpse of his wife. She had killed herself. He called her a pig. And that took me back to Charles Lawton in the original Mutiny on the Bounty and back to The Hunchback and Victor Hugo and Les Miserables and Jean Valjean leading an underground life, and you, grandmother, great-grandmother, living in Shabba's ravine in a shack, keeping your trunk locked. I remember that Anthony Quinn grew up near there, and I wondered why he had never played Don Quixote. I found a picture. It was you standing with a man. Was he my great-grandfather, grandmother, great-grandmother, refugee exile from a revolution, with your trunk, its faded flowers, your faded life, Durango. You were from Durango, Mexico. A gunfighter's name, Johnny Durango, who reminded me of Marlon Brando and One-Eyed Jacks. Years after you died, in a rainy February, I opened your dusty trunk. I saw Don Quixote in Spanish. I saw your black silk slip and yellow colored maps. Did you really escape? Did you come here to see your daughter die at 23? To see her marry a man who drove his motorcycle into a Catholic church during Mass? A man who never read Don Quixote? A man who later carved churches out of wood for priests who absolved him of bigamy, committed four times over? A man who gave me a gun for my 10th birthday, a gunslinger's pistol? Durango, Colorado, 20 years later. I saw deer hunters, I saw dead deer on blood-stained cars, blood-soaked, your dead husband, an old Bible with your name, Victoria, from Durango, a runaway, grandmother, great-grandmother, I miss you, I miss the movie of your life, the one where Sophia Loren plays you, co-starring Marlon Brando, Anthony Quinn, Barbara Stanwyck, and Gary Cooper, title song by Richie Valens, grandmother, great-grandmother, I lost your statues, the one of Jesus like a bloody dead deer, on an icy car in a snowy town in Durango, Colorado. I lost your crucifix, but I still have Don Quixote. I hold it, and it becomes a film called Durango. My grandmother, Victoria Reyes, who was born in Durango, Mexico, she died at 23, her appendix burst here in Los Angeles, and she didn't get to the hospital on time. And at the time uh, when she died, uh, my mother was a little girl, and my mother says that her first 10 years of her life are a total blank. And it appears that during some time in her childhood, she may have been sexually molested or abused. So that's the, you know, the kind of violence that I'm talking about which is, you know, I think even uh, a deeper sort. It leaves such a scar. And I believe that we all are uh, the results of the legacies of our families. So that's my mother losing her mother at a very young age. And what happened is that my grandfather, the one who was married eight times, the one who rode a motorcycle through a Catholic church <clears throat> during Mass, uh, and then later on, because he had you know, lived a pretty wild life, he would carve these beautiful churches. I mean, he obviously was an artist at that level and give them to churches and give them to the pastors of, of, of churches because he wanted to be absolved and of...
the sins. Well, he really didn't uh, take care of my mother or her brother. And my mother grew up in a shack with my great-grandmother, the one from Durango who brought her mother up. And what my uh, great-grandmother did is she was a fortune teller in Chavez Ravine. And that's where her tarot cards, and she told fortunes, and she was a curandera. And, but they lived in a shack. And I'm writing another book. And this book is about my mother. Uh, and it's a combination of uh, fiction and, and uh, true stories. And one of the stories is called Begging for Bones. And my great-grandmother would send my mother to the local butcher and she would stand at the back. Now she's a little girl, and this could be one of the reasons why part of her <laughs> childhood is, is a mystery to her, it was a mystery to her. She would wait until the butcher saw her and then ask for bones, beg for bones. And sometimes she got bones, sometimes she got nothing, sometimes she got a little meat, and then she would take it back and she and her grandmother, my great-grandmother, would uh, you know, have a little dinner. So there's that in terms of violence. And then later on, she uh, went to school in Chavez Ravine. I forget the name of the, of the school, but, it, but she only went through eighth grade. And by 13, she was an ironer in a garment factory. And I will say this, she could iron like nobody's business. I mean, she really could iron. <laughs> because she did that at 13. And she had me when she was 17. So I am the child of a teenage mother. 